guys, it's Andy from Moto's Cades and Coffee, and today I'm really excited to bring you my new series, Legends of Arcade. It's a behind the scenes, behind the curtains look of the history of arcading and where we are today. We interview the owners, the operators, the pickers, the buyers, the shippers, the home use players in the arcade community. So it's only gonna cost you a quarter. Put it in, who's got next? Today we talk with Ben Thornburn, the owner of Coin Op Amusements in Hagerstown, Maryland. Ben's been arcading his entire life and has the knack for finding just the right arcade for just the right person. So let's talk with him and find out what makes him a legend of arcade. All right, guys, we're at the world famous Coin Op Amusements. Um, we're gonna go try and interview Ben Thornburn. Um, we're gonna go take a look at some of his stuff and just get a quick background on what he has to offer the arcade community. Pretty cool place. So let's go check it out. We got the world famous Ben Thornburn. We're gonna go through Coin Op Amusements and we'll have a little sit, sit down and chit chat and uh, talk a little bit about the industry. All right, so we're gonna take a little walk through the warehouse. Um, this is a Coin Op Amusements. It's how many floors, how many levels, how many caverns? Have you found every spot in this building? There's 26 rooms. We counted the rooms. There's a, almost 50,000 square feet when we, when you add it all together. So basically it's like a grocery store all stacked up. So it's three levels, but kind of, there's a few levels that are down and then up a few feet. So it's kind of- Multi-level. Multi-level. Okay, okay. Um, but I have pretty much every room. Wow. Stuff. Wow, it is just pretty packed in here. Okay. So, even the hallways have stuff. The hallways is this a jukebox room right here? Yeah, we've got CD jukeboxes and uh, parts. Wow, okay. Lots and lots and lots of parts. Parts, okay. All right. And then there's a room down here full of stuff. Yep. There's some of the levels you talked about. Okay. The building we found out was initially built in about 1898. So it's been built on to numerous times over the years. 1898. And is it a historical building registered or anything like that? Uh, not yet. Okay. It was Caskey Bakery. Okay. And then in 1954, it got bought out by the competing bakery in town. They shut it down. The building sat vacant for a little while. Then R.D. McKee bought it and turned it into a wholesale hardware store. Okay. And it was a wholesale wow. hardware store till about 1990 when Home Depot came to town and shut the, basically shut the, the local hardware's all went under. Okay. So then it became a, like the guy sold pirate stuff online. Pirate stuff. Pirate stuff. So like playing cards and anything you could think of that had something to do with a pirate. <laughs> okay. They sold that stuff out of here and then it came full of games. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go talk about it. Let's go. Uh, right. Here, take, I, can walk, take... I can walk you upstairs. Sounds good. Sounds good. Oh, there's like secret back door ways to get upstairs and uh, <laughs> artwork. And you could probably get lost in here if you didn't know where you were going. <laughs> awesome. Is this the main level we're on right now? Yes. This okay. is the main level that we use okay. every day. Wow. Look at all that stuff. All right. Did you get those in your wilderness uh, course? <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually uh, have never shot anything in my life. But okay. I like taxidermy. Okay. But I randomly find when I'm buying <laughs> jukeboxes or old operators, they just come come with the territory. They tend to give it to me half the time because usually their wives want it out of the place. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, I have. Oh wow. Here. These look like a little nicer jukebox here. Yes. Some of them, very cool. All right. And then this is the garage area where we first bring stuff in. Okay. okay. <laughs> so this is we're unloading a truck that just came in yesterday. Okay. As you can hear, Grizzly. Yeah. Yep. Um, This room is where I have my loading docks and stuff that I ship overseas or in tractor trailers. They back up right there. So 
A little bit of everything. Very, very cool. All right. I'll show you upstairs. Yeah. Saw you had a dual pod racers there. I love that. I love pod racers. Super underrated game. Just huge. And to have a link dual one with the special. I haven't seen one of those before. You don't find the link to the duels very often. No, that was awesome. I think they would have made a lot more of them for as good a game. Yeah, it's good. And yeah. Yeah. So this eventually will be my little showroom. Showroom here? Okay. And this is like the main front door where people walk in. Yeah. Okay. Stuff ready to go to an auction. Yep. Okay. And some of your uh, some of bigger and, and newer stuff. Some cool. Newer games. <sighs> Up here, show you some other stuff. Thanks. Hey, bunny. Is that a bumblebee bunny? That's bunny bread. Bunny bread. I'm um, bread company. Yep. That was, okay. I had that sign when I was a little kid hanging above my bed when I was about That's five so cool. years old. Uh, this is my office. Okay. Haven't really started working on it much. Whoa, that's an awesome table. <laughs> Yeah, valley pool table desk. That's very cool. <laughs> this is starting to Ooh. part of my jukebox collection. Is this your personal jukebox collection? Yes. Woohoo! Look it? at these. These are awesome. Oh, and those are restored or fixed up or yeah. Once they make them up here, they tend to stay. What are those three right there? So the one on the left is a 1948 Arion. Uh -huh. It's the only jukebox to actually use neon as lighting. Wow. So that's a real neon pink wow. tube in there. Okay. The other one is a 39 Master. And then the one on the right is a 39 Seabird Classic. As part of the Legends of Arcade series we're doing, we got Ben Thorburn from uh, Coin Up Amusements. We're going to ask him a couple questions and uh, just kind of how he got in the business and so forth. So you ready for that, Ben? Okay, so um, Ben, thank you again very much for uh, let, let me uh, speak with you. I gotta say, you've been in this business how long? Just roughly. Literally all my life. Before before I was born, my dad was buying and selling jukeboxes, and I went with him literally ever since I was a toddler, and just rode along with him. Went to all the vending companies with him, crawled around, you know, yeah. poked at stuff, and you know, helped him as much as I could as little as I was and just kind of grew up with it it mainly started with uh, jukeboxes but then obviously people will have one jukebox in their house but they'll have you know 30 pinballs and 50 videos so it's it grew more into pinballs and videos later on okay in the I guess mid 90s so uh, you've been doing this like you said literally all your life now a question that I'm going to ask is, would you consider yourself more in the vein of a picker, an arcade seller, uh, everything all at once? A uh... uh, picker and a collector. Okay. I, the thrill of, to me is the hunt. Of <laughs> finding the stuff and going in these crappy warehouses and seeing the stuff literally just thrown in there, dilapidated, and then pulling it out and getting it to people that, you know, clean it up make it perfect and it's like the highlight of their collection that is awesome. i guess to me i love seeing it from start to finish okay and there's just not enough time in my day to ever do it so now i'm gonna ask two questions does the thrill matter on how many games you get or one game 20 games a, a thousand games is it about the same or uh, it really if it's if it's uh, something super rare or odd or something i haven't had before it could be one or two games okay but then usually it's more fun when it's a large quantity. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, you know, I've had thousands of Mizpacks and Galagas and Zaxons and that sort of stuff. So if I just go into a warehouse and there's, you know, three Mizpacks, that's not as much fun. But if you go into a warehouse where, like, the Mizpacks are all gone, but everybody left all the odd titles, to me, that's what's fun. Very it's cool. Finding the rare stuff. Now, I'm sure this job takes you all over, and you've probably been all over. So let me ask you this question. What states have you not been to? Um, North Dakota, South Dakota. Um, Yet, I should say, probably. 
There are not many. I mean, I've driven all the way to California, gone down all the way to Corpus Christi, Texas to an operator down there. Okay. Um, I tend to stick east of the Mississippi River just because by the time I head that far, it's tough to uh, make it worthwhile with the transportation costs. Gotcha. And I'll travel anywhere. Understand. And uh, um, speaking of travel, so you're based out of Hagerstown, Maryland. Yep. And what are the pluses and minuses of being based out of Hagerstown? So I actually like it. There's there's a whole lot of positives. You're at the intersection of 81 and 70, so you can head north and south, east and west. You're an hour away from D.C., an hour from Baltimore, um, two hours from Pittsburgh. So it's a good central location for me. Okay. And real estate's reasonable to where I can have a 50,000 square foot warehouse full of junk and it's not costing me an arm and a leg okay. to keep it. Okay. Um, the town is up and coming for sure. Okay. So it's, uh, land values are going up, They're not going down, which is nice. Okay. Um, so. Very good. And um, so how long have you uh, had and operated Coin Op Amusement yourself? Uh, By myself running it, it's going on a second year. Okay. And how many folks do you have uh, working with you? It's just me, my wife, and my dog. Occasionally, I have a guy that comes and helps me. Okay. Um, pallet stuff and whatnot, every, maybe once every few weeks. But it's pretty much just my wife and I and wow. my dog. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's one heck of a big operation to be running essentially by yourself. But Do you ever find... Is there a standard day to day or is every day a new story? Every day is something new. And Absolutely. that's truly what I love about it is right. every day is an adventure. That's great. That's so great. you're not uh, you're not just going to the office sitting in your desk and yeah, doing nothing else. Minutes. Gotcha. And um, okay, I, I know I know you're a busy guy. What kind of hours <laughs> do you keep? Are you really like twenty four seven almost? Like uh, uh, for the past the last two years, I pretty much was 24-7. Yep. This year, I've tried with 2021 to try to simplify things. And, okay. Uh, I try to work from about 9 to 8. Okay. So I have slowed it down a bit, but still, it's, uh, it's odd hours. And because I sell overseas, the time difference oh, yeah. is completely different. So I'm getting messages at 1, 2, 3 in the morning. So I've, I finally realized that just... Just go to sleep and wait till I get wake up in the morning. <laughs> There's always work. There's always work. So I'm going to say this, and what I've seen from you, and I've known you for, what, five, five, six years, is it's hard work. It's very hard work, and the reward is not many people do the hard work. Yes. Okay, have you found that? And But it pays off in the end. If you, yes. if you bust your... Your tail. Bust your butt, and you can work 80 hours a week at it if you want it. Yep. But it's lucrative, but you do have to work very hard, and it's odd hours. And like last night, I didn't get home till 11 o'clock right. from picking an operator in Ohio. Okay. And then, sure enough, I have to be right back here at 9 o'clock in the morning. Right. So it's just, uh, it's different, but the thrill of the hunt and finding the stuff right. keeps your adrenaline going, and you enjoy it. Let's talk about the community. How small is the arcade community? And specifically, how small or how big is the East Coast arcade community? And do you find that there's a lot of familiar faces that you run into every once in a while? Yeah, it's kind of funny how we all know each other. <laughs> and even places that I go pick, other people that I know have picked there and they know so-and-so. And it's a very small community. So even worldwide, it's a small community. It's growing. Yep. For sure, um, but it's—I still feel like I'm one of the younger people in it. For and sure, and I'm 37 now. What do you find about the trust in buying and selling? Is it different than other businesses? You think, or is it pretty pretty? I—I I have very good luck with it. It seems right, and because I—I can read people very well. There are a lot of the arcade and pinballs enthusiasts seem to be much more cutthroat where they'll uh, try to <laughs> undercut or or offer more or something to get it right whereas with like jukebox guys and whatnot it's just <laughs> that's the price and they'll that's argue it. with each other okay good deal um 
what do you uh, what do you hope for the next year and I guess the next five what would you like to see and uh, I know two years is going strong but do you see uh, where do you see yourself in a few years um being able to collect more so it's uh, when I started in uh, when we started two years ago I started out of a, a 10 by 20 storage unit right and built it systematically and just busted my ass for a few years and was able to buy this warehouse and now I'm able to keep stuff. That's awesome. Whereas before it was I had to keep the lights on so everything pretty much that I found got sold. Okay. But now I'm able to finally keep a few things. What do you like to look for most? Arcades, pinballs, jukes, or all of the above? I like to look mostly for the 30s and 40s jukeboxes. Okay. But they just plain to aren't out there because gotcha. people have been picking them since the 70s. Okay. So I now tend to pick mostly the videos and pinballs. Okay. Pinballs are tougher. We have a margin because it's easy to look online and see exactly what they're worth and it doesn't take a genius to, to do that now. So everybody seems to know exactly what their pinballs are worth. Video games are still very subjective because... Unbelievably has, so. <laughs> one has water damage, one doesn't. One has a J-Rock board, one has the original board. So there's still so much variation in there with videos that it's still able to... What about geography? Same price geography different, or do you think it's pretty standard across the uh, coast? It's because? pretty standard. Okay. Um, now that sh shipping's gotten so easy that, okay. I mean, you kind of only have to add, you know, 350 bucks to every machine. But gotcha. It tends to now the stuff tends to go farther. Whereas a couple of years ago, you wouldn't send a two or three hundred dollar machine shipping because the shipping would cost you more than the more than machine. Yeah. But now the machine values have increased. Right. You could actually ship up there. All right. Last question. Pick one pinball, arcade, and jukebox as your crown jewel. What do you What do you want to collect? Pinball, still Monster Bash. Okay. Um, video. My favorite. Video to play is actually Swimmer. Yep, I know. Which I have yet to find a nice one. They're pretty uh, usually water damaged, right? Yes. <laughs> yep. Those cabinets, the flake board just yep. fell apart. Yep. But that's probably one of my favorite games to play. Okay. That and Jungle King, I remember playing as a Oh, kid. yeah. Okay. Um, so it's not your typical Ms. Pack and Galaga like anybody okay. else, it seems. Um, jukebox is probably the forty early 40s Rockolas. The right during the war, they just had totally different design and okay. mostly wooden glass, so they didn't survive much. But okay. That's my goal was to get right, Well, I appreciate you uh, taking a little time out of your day. Um, hopefully you guys like that interview with the world famous Ben Thornburn. <laughs> um, good luck to you uh, next year and the upcoming Thank years. And uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And uh, let uh, Ben or myself know what questions you have for him and we'll see if we can get him to answer in the comments uh, below. So thanks for watching and uh, enjoy uh, coin up amusements.